when I woke up, I knew that he was nearly dead because his face was really white, his lips were bright blue, he was only breathing now and again. Um, but I, I couldn't stand it any longer. I just thought, this has got to end, this has got to end now. And I just put a pillow over his face. He loved to draw, he loved to be with people, um, he loved going out and about. He just enjoyed life and he'd made up his mind to enjoy it as much as he could. He loved Noddy. Noddy, I haven't <laughs> heard about him. <laughs> he, he loved Noddy because Noddy never grew up. In our family we get the disease in the early 30s. He, just said right from the beginning, if I get this disease, I'll shoot myself. And he never wavered from that, that if he got it, he was going to die before it really cut into him. He'd given up his job. They'd offered him redundancy and he took it. And I said, why did you do that? And he just said, oh, things are happening. Um, and then when he asked me for to loan him some money. I was really worried because that wasn't like him at all. Um, so I started to see him more and we would go out for days. And then I suddenly received a shop bought card and I thought, he can't draw anymore. He can't do this. Um, and I just knew then that he was going along the path of this Huntington's disease. And then he didn't want to get on a train, he didn't want to be around people. His friends had phoned me and said, look, we know he's in, but he won't open the door. And then he said to me, I'm going to Scotland to visit my friend. Um, I wasn't sure about that. And he said, I'll be away six weeks. So I kept phoning and then one day the phone was picked up and he just said, help. So we went over there and when he opened the door he was like a walking skeleton because he'd been trying to starve himself to death but keep himself sedated with vodka and what he wanted me to do was buy him some vodka because he'd run out and instead of that I called an ambulance and he was absolutely furious with me um, but he stayed in hospital we would go out and we would have a laugh because he wasn't a depressive person and we had good times but it always ended up, how do I die? He had a bad episode and went back into hospital and I was taking him out because it was his birthday. We were supposed to be going to South End and he just said, I want to go back to my flat. I haven't been in my flat for a while, I want to see my flat. So it was his birthday, I took his cards and when we got to his flat he said can't be bothered, can't be bothered with all that, my friends have got me what I want. And he went into the bedroom and he came back with a syringe and with a packet of what was heroin. Um, and I just thought that was the best way, that was the best way for him, not a violent way. So he couldn't inject it because of his movements were bad. At that point, he was beginning to have trouble talking, walking, eating. His movements were getting bad. So although he tried, he couldn't inject it. And in the end, he just picked up what was on the spoon and just swallowed it. And then he looked at me and he went, oh, that was horrible, wasn't it? Um, and then I said to him, well, we'll lay down. So we laid down, we talked about his life, and he gradually went off to sleep. Um, and I went to sleep as well. I just, I don't know. I was happy with the way he'd chosen, if you like. And we both went to sleep. When I woke up, I knew that he, 
was nearly dead because his face was really white, his lips were bright blue, he was only breathing now and again. Um, but I, I couldn't stand it any longer. I just thought, this has got to end, this has got to end now. It was quite difficult actually, it was his birthday, um, but it was an easy way for him to go. The police were very kind to me. They never shut me in a police cell. Um, they were very good actually. And in the end I told them exactly what had happened because there was no way I could keep it inside of me. It was such a big thing to have done that it had to come out. I couldn't keep it locked inside me. Um, so then it all changed to a murder inquiry, which was quite horrible actually. And eventually the police dropped it to aiding and abetting a suicide. And I was happy with that because that was what I had done. So I was willing to plead guilty to that. And I thought that the um, probation officer at the Old Bailey and the judge were very good to me. I think they took the trouble to understand what it was all about, um, that it was what Nigel wanted. Um, yeah, and I thought they dealt with it very well. <laughs> Have a snivel. <laughs> and obviously when he'd gone, I want him back, but I don't want him back ill. I want him back as he was.